Hey guys, happy Friday. I'm so glad you're here with us today. I'm Brenda Sue Lansdowne and our business is called Bisa Boutiques. We have a very large internet store of jewelry components and DIY stuff for mixed media. But what I really love to do is share new ideas with my friends at YouTube. So I'm here with my sidekick, Javi. She's my niece. And um, we together kind of explore all kinds of different things that that we can do to help you get new ideas as well. So I hope uh, you'll stick with us today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make another stretchy, but we're not gonna concentrate so much on putting it together and design it as we are on making parts for it to make it unique. And we're gonna do this by means of tissue decoupage, which is like falling off a log, I've done stuff about it before. There are videos if you want to go back to see about tissue decoupage. We're going to do a little bit here on flat acrylic beads that look like pearls. Fun stuff, easy stuff. I'm going to show you the little tricks and we're going to make a nice little bracelet out of it. And we thank you so much again for tuning in with us. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And if you get a chance, check us out at www.bsueboutiques.com. Okay, now let's do the project. Okay, guys, so let me show you how to do this section that I was telling you about. Well, first of all, let's see this bracelet. This is the bracelet that I made, and I used this part, which is on our website. We have lots of them, but it's really kind of cool. It's a flat kind of pearly piece, and it's got holes on either side. It's perfect for tissue decoupage because you've got a lot of flat surface on there, you know? So I thought, well, why don't I make some beads with tissue decoupage on them? And then also I did use some shorter square, or not square, but rectangular ones, which we also have. And I forgot to bring them to the table. So we're just going to work on this because it's the same, whether it's square or whether it's this oval size. But the oval one is perfect for being in the middle. Let me just take this off. Now, I didn't put my glue on it yet, so it's tied off, but... Not tightly, so hopefully it doesn't come loose. But anyway, you can see what I've done here. Basically, you know, just like any other stretch bracelet, you put it together and you work it. And I do the same on each side and then I end the back piece with a flat piece so it doesn't annoy your wrist. And what's so nice about these pieces is that the hole is big enough that you can get through it. So um, it's not hard to tie it off the way I like to tie it off because you know how I like to tie it off double. So you can still do that with this. So anyways, this is how I put together. I have one oblong like this, and then I have two that I already made here, of the short ones. We have the short ones, but this principle is the same. It makes no difference. It's the same. So I have one like that, and then I have one like this on the back. So this is as easy as that. So I just used some rhinestone rondelles, which you have at the website, and some pearly beads that we have at the website. We have the little um, flower beads like this. And we have some bigger ones, too, and the rondelles. I mean, just about everything here, we've got it or something super similar to it. So, you know, if you're looking for stuff that you can use that's pretty much like what you see here, you'll find it in the beads and rhinestones section. The the, the uh, pearls are in the pearl section and the beads and, and the rhinestone stuff like the rondelles is in the rhinestone findings. So it's very easily to find, easy to find. If anybody thinks that a kit is a good idea, you can let me know. We don't have a lot of success with kits, but if you think you need one, um, let me know. Let me see what I can work out for you, okay? All righty, so let's get to it. I'm going to show you how to do this. That's the main thing, as doing the decoupage. Okay, so now what I do is I start <clears throat> out with, this isn't tissue paper, it's rice paper. It has kind of the consistency of tissue, but it's a little bit sturdier, just a little bit. So on one side, you can see the grain of it. It's really made out of a fiber type stuff. So it has kind of a handmade look about it, which I love. And this is a piece that we have, it's a double piece, the extra long piece that we have in our tissue paper section. We have like at this time, 10 or 11 different styles of tissue paper that work really well. So um, you can get a lot out of one piece of this, not tissue paper, rice paper. You can get a lot out of one piece of rice paper. You can get a lot of jewelry, especially earrings. So this is the one I used, and you'll see it. I don't remember the name of it. I don't know if there even was one, but um, 
it's all in little squares like a patchwork. You know, it has different, it has like music in it and roses in it and a little cameo in it, lace type stuff. And sometimes there's a word in it if you can make it work. So anyway, so I cut these out by squares and you're going to see what I mean now. <clears throat> I have some ready. So I just cut little squares out of there. This looks like some of them be pretty for this kind of thing so I can show you. I really like the ones with the roses, but they got used up. Anyway, so how you do, because <laughs> I like them. Anyway, what you do is, first of all, this one's too long, so I gotta take a little piece off. And you know, you don't have to measure these. Just It's just eyeball it. I mean, if you feel better measuring it, by all means measure it, but it's mostly just eyeball it. So I'm gonna take about this much off, and that'll be close enough, okay? All right, so what do I do? What I do so that I can make it go around my bead is I take one of these. I'll just move this aside. I take one of these and I cut it like this. Just not, I cut it out and then I fold it. I'm sorry, up and down with a square like this way. See, just fold it like this. Hot dog. Easy. Would you say? The hot dog way. <laughs> it's a hot dog way? You know, like the hamburger way, and then there's the hot dog way? No, I never heard of that. Yeah, you never heard of that? That must be from your generation, Javi. <laughs> <laughs> Javi's the young generation, I'm the old one. Okay, so anyway, you see how I just did that. So I'm just going to move this aside. Now what do I do? What I do is I cut a little bit of this edge off. Instead of trying to stay straight going down it, I just cut it off. Then I have a look. I'll take it apart. I got two. So I can actually do two beads with this. Neat, huh? See, I told you, you'll get a lot of mileage out of one sheet of rice paper, let me tell you, because you just don't need much to make jewelry. So I'm gonna hold it up to the piece, and sure enough, this is, this is good, but it might be a little wide because I don't know if you can see it, but if you get it a little too wide, It'll start to kind of pooch out at the corners and then you got to go back and trim it and stuff and it's just a pain. So one of the best ways to avoid that is to go thinner with it. So I have a few pieces cut out back here that I believe will work a little bit better. Let's try them. I had them cut out for the short pieces here, but I think this might work on it. As long as I'll go around. Got to make sure it goes all the way around. Yeah, this will be all right. See, it's slipping on me because I don't have any Mod Podge on it. You need Mod Podge. I should tell you that. I'm sorry that I forgot. Just plain old. This is satin Mod Podge. That's good. Matte's good, too. Gloss if you want to use it. See, it still has a little bit of tendency to do it, but I think till we get the Mod Podge on it, we'll be all right. And it's as simple as simple can be. Let me just move this out of the way. I got one of these foam brush things, but you don't have to have this. You can use your fingers if you want, but... I prefer to use this. I think you most of you brush? will too. You could use a paintbrush too because Mod Podge, you know, is water soluble. It's, you know, water based. So you can get it out. <clears throat> but I find I do better with this. But, you know, if you have something you do better with, then by means, all means do it. If you're like really into decoupage, you might have tools that are better than mine. I just do it on these little pieces, you know, so I know it works there. All right. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm not even going to try to squirt this because I know I've had this bottle for a little bit and it's kind of stopped up so I'm just going to pour a little bit out oops that might be more than I need but if I was doing a whole bunch of them it wouldn't be if I was doing like nine or ten of them that would not be too much that'd be about perfect but we're not going to do that many so okay now when we go in under here probably a piece of melly fur Ugh. it's underneath <laughs> I tried so hard to get that off. The cat is everywhere in here. Okay, so I think we decided to do this piece. Now, like I said, it could be a little longer than this. This is right side up. I found that it's best if you do it on the back side, and I'll show you why in a minute, but it just seems to be a little less clumsy if you do. So just dab that down in there, and I just paste this thing down. And don't worry, you're going to get some on your fingers. Um, it'll wash right off. It's pretty much like glue. <laughs> it is a type of glue. Ah. Mm -hmm. Like Elmer's glue. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think some people use Elmer's for deck punch. I'm not sure. Yeah, don't quote me on that. But I think you can. Just water it down a little bit. But anyway, I prefer Mod Podge because it's made mm -hmm. 
for that type thing and has been used for that for many, many years. It's kind of tried and proven, you know. So now I'm going to kind of take the middle part of this and I'm going to try to put the middle part down. If it goes a little crooked at first, don't worry, you can fix it. So it's pretty much in the middle. So I'll fold this around to the back and I can see I'm going to get that little pooch, which I don't like, but we'll see if we can press it down. So what I want to do is I want to get this as tight as I can without making a big wrinkle on the back because that can be an issue too. Although it doesn't look terrible if you get a little bit of a wrinkle, I would prefer not to have one. So yeah, I do have the pooching out stuff going on the side. So, oops. It's fumbly for me. <laughs> it's a fumbly thing, so I got a little wrinkle, but I pushed it back out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to correct this little pooch here with Mod Podge by just dabbing it, because you do have to go over the whole thing. And what I can do then is when this dries and cures, if it's still pooching out like that and I just can't stand it, then I can take my really sharp scissors and cut that off and it'll be okay, it won't come apart, it won't look bad, it won't, any of that, it'll be fine. Can you see? Be sure to leave your comments and questions underneath the video because we do answer. Javi checks that it and I check it too. What's that? That is so true, we always check it. Yes, we always check in it. Well, I get notifications on my computer if somebody says oh. something, so I know. As soon as I can, I come right over and see what's up, and Javi checks it a couple times a day, too, so we do answer. So if you have questions or comments, uh, you can ask them right there, or you can <clears throat> email me through the site by sending your um, question to Jordan, J-O-R-D-A-N, at bisuboutiques.com. And I will see it, and I will write you back. Sometimes I might even call you. So if you want to leave a phone number, feel free to do it. I can't always call you back, but sometimes it's just so hard to tell you in an email. I just rather pick the phone up. So anyway, some do ask sometimes, do I give private lessons and this kind of thing? And I have to tell you, I don't. This is about as close as you're going to get to a private lesson, but it is kind of because for all we know, it's just you and me right now, right? <laughs> Just ask me your questions if you have any, but it's pretty simple. So I try to get it over there. And now the thing is, is I need to let this cure. Now I've just got like poster board under here, so I don't want to put it on there. It'll stick to it, right? So I have a non-stick surface over here and I'll show you what I do. It's ugly, but I'm going to show you. This, I, <laughs> I sit and watch TV while I make these components. And so I had to have something to put on my lap. So I just had one of these cafeteria type trays. No, I didn't steal from the hospital. <laughs> um, but anyway, so then I'll just take that off of there. He picked it up. Don't worry about it sticking to that and you can't get it up or anything. It'll, it'll be fine. It will. It'll be fine. You could always use a Teflon mat. Yeah, that might be better, but actually this isn't bad. Oh, really? No. Awesome. Not for these. Not for Mod Podge. I've had an awful lot of pieces of Mod Podge on here. So anyway, so yeah, it looks like we might get a little poochy there. Now one thing you could do to cut that poochy thing down is just cut your strip thinner like this. There's a strip. This might be a little too thick, so maybe just take that much off. And then the more it fits the middle, the less it's going to do that. On the square ones, it's perfect like this. It just goes around really good. But this has a little curve to it or an arc to it, so it makes it a little bit funny. And you can see what I've done here too. Is this showing up in the? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see I have more. Oops, that's the one I just did. The, I have more here made, ready to be made into stuff, which I'm going to do that later tonight. I think I deserve a night off. To just do what I want to do. So I want to do this. I'm going to make some stuff. Because you can make really cool earrings out of these too. Really, you can. I can't do it this time, but maybe another time. So here are some that I did on um, these little wooden ones. These are vintage um, beads that I get from a warehouse sometimes. And they look like this to start with. And they're perfectly flat, just like the pearls. About the same you know, depth and everything. It's very close, I think, to the square ones. Yeah. Yep. But they just have, the the plasticky ones have the edges 
curved. And what I like about these two, I don't know if you can tell it in the video or not, but they have kind of a slightly textured finish to them. And what's so nice about that, it reminds me of cotton pearls. And cotton pearls are awesome. If you've never used them before, um, they're just awesome. We have a few on our website if you want to check them out sometimes. I always look for stuff that other people don't have, never thought of to use, um, that you maybe find in vintage jewelry a lot. And that's what I go for when I'm making stuff. And when I'm bringing stuff in to show other people for a slice. We have like the the typical stuff. We have Mod Podge. We have embossing ink. We have um, Perfect Pearls and Swell Again and all that stuff. We have all that. We have your typical tools and all that. We have a lot of beads, but a lot of them, they're unusual. They're not like everyday stuff. We have a lot of rhinestone findings, and we sell bass stampings and Beast of 1928, which is our premier line of pewter castings that come from 1928 Jewelry Company that are made just for us, and you won't find them anywhere else. So that's kind of cool. Getting back to this stuff. Enough of that. Um, I'm going to move this over here and just kind of show you um, how I might start putting one of these together okay so I have pieces parts here and to do that this won't take very long but I did want you to see at least the beginning of this just kind of as if you didn't see last week's video um, you might want to go back and have a look at it because we really went into designing one of these bracelets in depth I take off usually about 15 inches that's really way too much but I like working with more you know sometimes less is more and sometimes more is better and this is a case where more is better because you don't have <clears throat> a lot of trouble with it sliding off now you can use those clamps and all that but I don't personally care for them if you like them then use them I just it's not my thing so I always start with my middle bead I always start with my middle bead if you've got a better way, then you do it. But I like it because I can see how it's going, okay? And this is going to be about a 7-inch bracelet because that's what fits me. That's what fits most people. So I'm going to keep my ruler handy. We have that nice little bead mat, too, for bracelets. It's kind of cool, or the little bead board, too. But you can just use a ruler if you want. And I'm going to kind of look. As I put my stuff in, I'll put my ruler up in there and kind of check it. Okay, so now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a few of these. We don't have this one on the website. This is from my private stash, but I'm going to use it anyway. I try not to do that because sometimes people get frustrated and say, where is it? I can't find it. And it's like, well, um, hmm, that was my stuff. I'll try to get more then, you know. I'll try. Okay, so I'm going to start out by putting these up next to it first because one thing I worried about doing this is that it's so flat. You know, when we're doing the bone beads and the glass beads and that, and mixing them all together, they have a lot more dimension. And so um, it works a little bit better, you know, with the beads going around. You know, it's kind of got more, I don't know, it's more fluid or something. I'm really worried about, you know, this is going to be too flat and it's not going to look right. But if you use some stuff to kind of prop it up in the middle, it, it works out just fine. It looks good. It looks real good. I think so. I like it. I'll just put these on real quick. I just want to show you where to introduce the um, side beads, the square ones on the back. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Just looking at my other one to see what I had. Okay, so now I had some of these big flower beads, and I had a couple of these smaller ones which we do have these on the site, and these little ones here, which we do have on the site, too. The bigger ones we might have, they're called Apparition. That's the name of it. Or Check Glass. All these beads are Check Glass. I love, love, love Check Glass. So anyway, now this is going to go on here, cup side facing inward, because that will accommodate the dimension of the bead. Okay? So that's just going to go like that. These stretchies are so wonderful because they go together quick. And then if you have any problem with the way they're fitting up or looking, it's so easy to slide them off and start over. You just don't have a ton of time in it, you know. Um, like I mentioned last week, memory wire is one of my favorites. I love the look of it. It's just so cool and so vintagey. But um, 
If you make a mistake on memory wire, taking everything off. You can do it! Pain. Especially if you make really thick ones. Like, I like to make four, five, six coils. So, to you know, if you make a mistake early in, then you got to take pretty much everything off. This is like, if you have to take everything off, it's not a big deal. And this uh, is, what is this, Stretch Magic, which we have on the site, 0.7 millimeter. I like this one. There's There are thinner ones, but I like this one best. So... If you have stretchy cord in your life, in your stash, whatever, and you want to use a different one, then do it. It's just what I like, that's all. Okay, so now this is where these go on. Right here. On this side. What I want to do tonight when I'm playing around is I want to experiment to make a triple stack. Because, you know, as I talked last week, and if you didn't see that video about the designer stack stretchies go back and watch it i think you'll like it uh, is that you have to make them so that one layer doesn't compete with the one below it so that's the the one thing about that that gets a little bit funky but i need a little pearl rose on each side we're almost done javi's looking at her watch she wants me to make these 20 minutes and less and i think she's right but i have trouble with that I thought I wouldn't show you how to put this together, and then I thought, nah, probably better. <clears throat> you have the whole thing. You know how to do the tissue deck part, and you know how to um, finish it off. Because I wanted you to see that because of using these flat beads. We've not done that before, and you might say, you might get started and say, I don't know, I don't, know. I just, I don't quite understand how this is going to sit through these big flat beads. Is it going to work? You know. So I'm going to show you, yes, it's going to work. It's going to be fine. Okay, come on. Don't fight me. Don't fight me. There's supposed to be some sort of a needle that you can get for working with stretchy, but I don't really think you need to. That's my opinion. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so I have, yeah, one more to go. And then we're ready to do the last bead. Yay, we're there. Because we'll have seven inches. I will check it, but we will have seven because the last one I did is seven and I laid it out exactly the same way. So it should be fine. Now, if you need to make it smaller, then, okay, it's gonna fight me again. If you need to make it smaller, then you just don't put as many beads on. Or if you need to make it bigger, put a few more on, just like that. You just kind of figure it out yourself. All right, so let's see, where are we at? Yeah. This is about seven. Till I get the last one on, I'm going to be perfect. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the last one on, and this is going to be the flat bead that goes at the back of your wrist. And I really like to use a column bead or a flat bead there because um, it annoys my wrist to have something dimensional there. And I would imagine I'm not the only one in the world. So if you do this, you won't have that problem. So you can see I just tied it together now. So here's my tie off. I go one time like this, okay? Then I come around and pull it through one time like this. That's just Mod Podge sticking to my fingers. No big deal, peel that right off, wash right off. No big deal. So do that, like that and then I come through and I'm gonna do it another couple times and then I'm gonna th thread it back through the hole. Okay. That should be enough. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I wanna get this back through the hole here. So I have to pull my knot away a little bit so that I can see the hole. And then I'm gonna push this back through here and watch for it to come out the other side, which it did very nicely. So I didn't have to mess around with that. But now what I gotta do is I have to, just have to pull this up tighter. I have to get the second one through too. It needs to go through the other side. This knot is a little bit blobby. I'm just going to tell you that. And that's because I'm going fast. Normally, I would not like to see that. I would like to see that um, not be as blobby. Just tie it a little tighter and you should be fine. Okay. So this one, of course, is going to fight me. So what do I do? Pull this back away a little bit more. And that's because the other one's gone through already. And it's in there. So they're fighting each other. But it'll go through. Famous last words. I've never had one that didn't yet. Maybe this is the first one. Nope, there we go, yay! See it? Right there. All right, so now I'm gonna pull that up a little bit. And I'm gonna tie this around the existing 
string, okay, tie around it. So I've got both strings, but tie around the existing one, original one, through. And I tie it this way, and then through, tie it this way, and then through, and one more time, through, and this way. All right. So what I'll do then is I will let this sit for a little while, kind of stretch it, stretch it from here and here, go through, just kind of helps it a little bit. Stretch it a little bit. I'll leave that sit for a little bit so that I'm sure I've got it nice and tight. I'll check it in a minute when we get done. And then I will put a drop of jewelry super glue or hypotube cement. Either one's fine. I prefer hypotube cement because I won't glue my fin fingers together, which I really hate that. <laughs> so I usually like hypotube cement. But I'm going to let it sit for a little bit before I do that. Just a drop is all you want. Then you can cut the excess off. And you want to cut it not completely flush, but really close. Or it sticks out and looks weird. And I'm going to show you case in point. Let's see, where's my back? See, you can see I haven't glued this yet. So you can, can you see my little sticks coming off it this really too long so i gotta get my glue in there then let it sit till it's good and dry then clip those off and i'm good to go and i have a pretty bracelet now i've got two of them exactly the same or pretty much exactly the same so anyway i hope you enjoyed that i hope you want to try it you can see when i put it on see it goes completely flat they're not sticking up weird or anything and you're not fighting them either you're not like having a tendency to come up weird or stick up like that and you have to keep pushing your bracelet down all day no it stays nice and pretty. This is a pretty one. The ones I did before are real earthy, which I really love that boho earthy look. But once in a while, you need something that's kind of pretty. And this would be it. This is real pretty. This will not be expensive to make. You may have the parts and pieces already in your own stash at home. Um, if you don't have this kind of beads, the flat ones, we do. We have all this stuff if you need it. Okay, so try it out maybe this weekend and see what you think. And we will be back with you next week with a new project so again don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel we really appreciate that leave us a comment especially if you have questions or comments about maybe something you've tried and like to do you thought this was maybe a little bit better um leave leave us a kind comment underneath we we do monitor them and we do respond so we want to hear from you so next week we'll have some more fun and thank you so much for being a part of our fun today bye bye Thank you.